We're in studio with Dr. Klein, and today we're going to talk about some of the things that you might need in your daily regimen. And the first is down to basics. Okay, now why? Okay, are we going we're going to spend a few minutes discussing one single product, which is not something I've ever done before. Yeah. And the reason is I find myself repeating, you know, the same thing over and over again when people ask me why should I take this and what's special about it. Mm-hmm. Okay, and the answer is this: I want I want you to think about your health, the, the nutraceuticals, the things that you're taking to keep yourself healthy, and you're listening to this because you apparently you know believe that you can in fact influence your health. Sure. And it's just the way that it goes. But it's more like Legos. Okay, each piece has to be right. It has to snap in exactly the right way. If it's too big, it doesn't fit. If it's too small, it's not right. If it's not the right color, or if it's twisted the wrong way. And that's the way each one of these chemicals, sometimes known as vitamins, operate. There are subtle differences that make all the difference in the world. If you're looking for a Lego that's green and you substitute a yellow one, it's not going to look right. It's not going to feel right if it's not the right shape. So what does Down to Basics do, and why did I put this one together? And the answer is very, very simple. It is a very complicated mixture of vitamins, minerals, herbals, and amino acids. Hmm. But it's the basic. It's the starting place. If you were 18 years old or 16 years old or 25 years old, and you haven't had time, really, to develop the sorts of miseries that the rest of us have gotten through life, this is where you start. Now, why do you do this? Okay, because there's a a certain amount of B12 that you should have. There's a certain amount of vitamin A that's necessary. There's a certain amount of vitamin C that you're going to need. And what this does is it gets you essentially the bare minimum to replace the pieces that are missing in our diet. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the percentage, you know, uh, the recommended daily allowance, you're going to see that it's actually multiples of the RDA. And the reason is the RDAs are fiction. So if you're using the recommended daily allowances, the RDAs, as a guide to what you're taking, you're not even close to where you should be in the game with this. It just doesn't work. So what's in this stuff, and who really cares? Well, down to basics because it does just that. It gets you down to the basic starting block. And even at that, it takes four of these capsules a day to get the job done, two in the morning, two in the evening. And that seems like a lot. Because after all, if you're taking a one a day, it's one little teeny tiny tablet, and that's all you really need. That's nonsense. Now, why is it nonsense? Because it's like trying to pack 10 pounds of potatoes in a one-pound bag. You can't do that with potatoes. You might be able to do it with potato flour, but they're not the same thing. They don't taste the same, and they don't operate the same way. Sure. So if you have minerals, okay, they're, if they're inorganic, those molecules are very, very small. Well, it's all the iron you need. Yeah, it's rust. It isn't going to absorb. Your plants can't get it, neither can you. So the same thing is true with zinc, magnesium, manganese, calcium, boron. All of these things have to be in the appropriate form, which means that they have to be done in what are called organic uh, salts or chelates, Mm -hmm. amino acid chelate. You'll see all of those terms used. So what's in this stuff? Who cares? Vitamin A. Now, do you need much vitamin A? No, you actually don't. Less than 10,000 IUs of vitamin A will get the job done. Now, we used to use a lot of vitamin A in the industry to treat acne. Until we found out that once you got much above 10,000 units, it started causing issues with intra, you know, intracranial pressure. So we stopped doing it. Whoa. So 7,500 milligrams what, what we use. How much vitamin C do you use? There are a lot of people out there that are tremendously wasteful. Why? Because vitamin C is cheap. You can get the best vitamin C on the market and not pay a lot of money. Hmm. So that doesn't make it good to take lots of it because your body has to excrete it somehow. So it can be hard on the kidneys. So I typically start with 500 milligrams a day. Right. Now, can you take more? Certainly. Do you want to take more? Not typically. Okay, I've rarely used much more vitamin C than this unless I've got somebody that needs an inexpensive antioxidant. And vitamin C is marvelous for it. But for standard use, this would be it. Vitamin D3. Not vitamin D2, not vitamin D1, but D3. Dog 3. Cholecalciferol is the chemical name. Now, what's this all about? The, R- the RDA on this is 400 IUs. Most of the docs out there are stuck on 400. All of the RDAs in front of you are going to be 100, 250, 400. Now, those numbers are artif- are just nonsense. Why would they all be one of three numbers? It, it is nonsense. Mm-hmm. How much vitamin D does it take to work? It starts at 1,000 I use. Typically, what I do is I add additional vitamin D to this, but it depends upon the age of the individual and what else is going on. So we chose 1,000 I use. Why? Because it will keep most people out of trouble. Will it reduce your risk of breast cancer and colon cancer, pancreatic cancer? Not typically until you get to 2,000 IUs. 
but 1,000 keeps you out of trouble. I will add to it, oddly enough. Vitamin E. Most people don't need vitamin E. I mean, you've got plenty in your diet. It's there. Too much vitamin E, on the other hand, can lead to hip fracture. So there's a big Whoa. difference between 400 IUs of vitamin E and 800. Once you go over 800, you start getting into trouble. So we start off with 100 IUs in here. Okay, it tickles it, it gets the job done for the largest segment of people. Then it starts getting interesting. Vitamin K2. This thing contains 62 micrograms of vitamin K2, which is enough for about 80% of the population to prevent osteoporosis. This is especially true if you're young. So when you're at 30 years of age and things start to waffle a little bit, women in particular, 40 years of age, it's waffling even more. This is enough vitamin K2. Once you become osteopenic, that's when the, the bone starts to thin things start to do a little bit worse for you. Okay, then you're going to need a bit more, and what we'll do is we'll add it to it. Thiamine. Okay, well now we're getting into the B complex. So we're talking 25 milligrams of the B vitamins each. Mm -hmm. Now, what does, what does this mean? It means it's going to get most people, 80% of the population, past their immediate needs. Now, each one of these vitamins is different. You know, there's, what's the difference between uh, B1 and B2? And the answer is not one. Okay, what's the <laughs> difference between B1 and B12? It's not 11. Each one of these chemicals, it's like addresses on your house. Okay, if you're off by one, you're in somebody else's living room. Okay, you could be sleeping with somebody else's significant other. It's Whoop. a huge difference in terms of addresses. Okay, so what are we looking at here? So B6, 37 milligrams, uh, micrograms, is that enough? The answer is yes. Folic acid, 400 uh, micrograms. Now, those of you that know me, know that I really prefer things in the 5,000 microgram dosage. Mm -hmm. But that's five times the prescription strength. So 400 mics is right for individuals that I don't know or those individuals that don't have the need to open up small blood vessels. Those people that aren't of, you know, old enough, let's say, to worry about uh, dementia. So it's the right dosage for 80% of the people. Down to basics, for the top, you know, the, the largest majority of the people that are out there. Vitamin B12, 500 micrograms, perfect do dosage on a daily basis. Is it enough to treat somebody with pernicious anemia? No. You know, biotin, pantothenic acid, or vitamin B5, 150 milligrams a day. Now, that's a lot. What is it useful for? Adrenal fatigue or mm. adrenal failure. When somebody comes in and they're wiped out, I may bump that to 500, but I do it by adding an additional pill. This gets most of the, the heavy work done for very little money. Calcium. How much calcium do you think an average person needs? 100 milligrams a day. A lot of folks are out there taking three, four, five hundred 500 milligrams or more. Mm -hmm. More times than not, they're taking the wrong calcium. So it doesn't matter what you're taking in terms of milligram dosage. You have to get the right moiety. The one I like is calcium hydroxyapatite. Di you know, dicalcium malate works just fine. It's a little less expensive. So we use 100 milligrams in here. Those individuals with osteoporosis, I'll add additional calcium hydroxyapatite. That's the 20%. 80% of the people get it. Iodine, 112 mics is perfect. Molybdenum in there. Magnesium, 200 milligrams. The average need for magnesium is far less than that. What's this useful for? Restless leg syndrome, but it's the most prevalent of all uh, micronutrient deficiencies in our population. True enough, one person in five is going to need more. But that's, that's the wow. down to basics. Zinc. How much zinc does it take? Now, here's the fun part. When do you take your zinc? Well, when I get sick. Well, congratulations, Einstein. If you're zinc <laughs> deficient and your immune system's not working, why not take it ahead of time and end up with a strong immune system so you don't get sick? Right. Or if you do, if you do get ill, okay, contagious disease is contagious, that your body, the immune system is more active and works a whole lot better. Selenium. Selenium can be toxic. So if you're out there taking selenium tablets, you just throw them away and do it right. Zinc and selenium must be taken together in order for it to remain safe. How much selenium? Certainly less than 300 micrograms a day. Uh, so what have we got here? 100 micrograms. That's excellent to prevent thyroid disease. Gee, it's great that we know that you have it. Don't you think it's better if we prevent it? You know, ma you know magnesium. We talked about manganese, 2 mm -hmm. milligrams a day. It's perfect dosage for most people. Chromium. Now, why do you think you need chromium? Well, because you want shi shiny parts like your car? No, 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 no. Okay, chromium is necessary for the insulin receptors to work. How much chromium does it typically take? The answer is 200 micrograms a day, unless you start getting older. Now, what, what do all these things have in common? And there are more things in here that we could discuss, smaller, smaller pieces of the puzzle, but we got the main deals going. 
Why chromium? Why vanadium? These are things present in stainless steel, after all. You don't need that, except you do. The insulin receptors break when you're vanadium and chromium deficient. So we replace it. Early on, this is all you need. But as you get older, something magical happens. Okay, you start losing your hair. Your bone starts to melt away. But more importantly, your gut, your GI tract, your stomach, small bowel in particular, starts to slow down. So you have to take more in order to get the basics in. So down to basics, brilliant products, like 23 bucks a month. This is what we use to get people started. And we add some things to that individually by So that's case. all in one pill. One, it's in one capsule, yeah. One product. Very cool. Sounds like a lot of good stuff. All right. Remember this, folks. SufferNoMore.com, SufferNoMore.com, and StagesOfLifeVitamins.com. We'll talk to the doctor again tomorrow. The doctor again tomorrow.